I'm Scott and welcome back to Home Improvement Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to cut legs on a chair so you can shorten a chair or a bar stool. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. I do a lot of furniture repair, and you can see those videos on my Fixing Furniture YouTube channel. And in my experience in cutting legs on chairs, there are very few chairs or stools that you can use power saws for. And that's because legs on chairs are often on an angle, they're splayed, and they sometimes have shapes on them, so they're not square and easy to line up on tools. If the thought of using a handsaw intimidates you, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do this successfully. The important part is starting off with the right saw. So let me show you a few that I've got in the workshop here and what I recommend. Like any project, you need to make sure you're choosing the right tool for the job. What we're looking to do is accurately cut a straight line. So that means a coping saw, which is typically used for curves, is not the right tool. Also a flush cut saw with a flexible blade like this is meant for cutting things flat. It's not the right tool for the job here. So we're down to what I've got here is a dovetail saw that I purchased at a big box store and some 15 inch saws. The difference between these two is these have much more aggressive teeth on them. Here I've got nine points per inch and it's an aggressive cutting saw. And if you look at the labels of saws, here's another one. This one is labeled 12 points. And if I open this up, you'll see that it's got more teeth on it. The more teeth that you have, the smoother you're gonna get as a cut and a more controlled cut. Here's a third one that I have and this one is nine points. Now these saws are great for cutting two by fours or branches off of trees, but they won't be as accurate as using something that has more teeth per inch and gives you a finer cut. And that's where a dovetail saw like this is a better tool than this for cutting these accurate straight lines. Now if you want to move up in quality beyond what's at your local hardware store, there are two different styles of saws. One is a western saw, and this is an example here. This is a dovetail saw. They have a rib at the back and the blade is fairly rigid because you cut it on the push. So you don't want it moving around on you. Um, so this is one option. The other one is a Japanese saw. So I've got one here hanging in my tool cabinet. This is a Ryoba saw and it's unique in that it's got teeth on one side for ripping, cutting with the grain and teeth that are finer on the other side for cutting across the grain. So this is meant for cutting through material. And because Japanese saws cut on the pull motion, they don't necessarily need that rib and they are much thinner. Because you've got a thinner blade, you're cutting less material and they work much faster. I've also got a Dazuki style saw and this one does have a rib at the back, extremely thin blade, so it cuts very quickly and very fine teeth. I'm going to use this Dazuki saw and the dovetail saw to cut these chair legs and you can see the difference between the two. To cut off these chair legs, we don't need any fancy jigs, but the first thing you need is a flat surface. If you don't have a workbench like this that's flat and true where your chair doesn't rock, find a spot in your home where you can set the chair down and it's not rocking. That'll make sure that when you mark the length of the legs, they're all going to be consistent and hopefully when you're done, you won't have a rocking chair. On these chair legs, I'm taking an inch off of the bottom. So I've got enough material here that adds up to an inch. And this just gives me consistent spacing from the surface to the top here. Now the key thing is to make sure I've got a piece that can overhang and get as tight as this is possible. Now using a pencil to mark lines on dark wood, you'll never be able to see that. So you can put masking tape on here and mark on that. Or what you can use is a marking knife or you can use a white fabric pencil that really works well on dark wood. Now what I want to do is make sure I mark two sides on the outside of the chair, and that way I've got reference lines to make sure I've got an accurate cut. Now the advantage of using this type of pencil is it's really easy to see. The disadvantage of it is it rubs off fairly easily. So that's where a marking knife can come in. A marking knife has got a very sharp edge on it, and what you do is use the bevel side down Put it on the piece and then as you draw the line you get a score. That score line is the most accurate line I can get for sawing to, but if you don't want to invest in the marking knife, a pencil line will do. With the chair all marked, what I'll do is lay down some padding and turn this on its side. What we want to do is make sure we've got enough padding 
that we're not going to be damaging the chair. So I'll turn this around to the end of the bench here. And you need to make sure you've got a stable spot because the more the chair moves when you try to cut it, the more difficult this becomes. I'll add a clamp at the bottom here and that'll just help stabilize the chair. If you're working on a stool or a chair that has round legs like this chair here, what you'll want to do is make sure you mark all the way around the chair and that way you've got a good guideline for your saw. So it's just a matter of blocking up to the right height and then working around the leg and making sure you've got a nice straight line. This might seem a little finicky, but it's really important to make sure you get those lines parallel with the surface here. You can't just measure from the end and cut it off because you'll end up with one portion of the leg touching the floor while the other portion isn't. Let me get this out of the way and finish marking this chair. Please give us a thumbs up so more people will see our videos. The first one I'm going to use is the dovetail saw that I purchased at a hardware store. And this one reverses so I can control what side it's on. Now the handle is offset, so it's a little bit more difficult to control than most saws, um, but it's something I've had success over time. If this is the first time you're using a new saw, what I'd recommend is score a line on the waist side over here so that you can practice using your saw before you have to make this cut. Now if you're working with a western saw, the cut is on the push, so you want to start on this corner here because the material behind the saw is supporting the saw cut. If I were to start over here on this edge, I could end up with splintering coming out. So with a western saw, start on this front corner. On the Japanese saw where you're cutting on the pole, you want to start here because what you're doing is you're pulling this way and the wood here is supporting the cut. The hardest part of cutting is starting the saw. So if you're just to put the saw in here and pull it back and forth, it's going to move all over. So what you want to do is use the knuckle on your thumb to control the saw. So put your thumb down on the piece and then lean your knuckle into the saw blade. And what you're doing is you're using your knuckle as a guide. I'll put my thumb on here. I'm right handed, so I'm putting my left thumb here. Line up the saw on the waist side of this line. Put my thumb here. And what I'm going to do is pull it in the non-cutting direction. So I'll place it down here and pull it back. Now by pulling it back, what I'm doing is I'm creating a slight groove. So I want to do that a few times. And that gives me a starting point for the saw. So once I've got that started, then I can start a regular sawing motion. Now what I want to do is go across this line first and establish that line before I go deeper down here. So this will establish a straight line and then this will make sure I'm cutting vertically on the line. And once I cut to those two points there, I've set the saw and I can continue cutting all the way through and I'll make sure I've got a perfect cut. I hold up the piece that came off here, you can see that there's a bit of texture on that block of wood. So it's not a perfectly smooth cut, but for the bottom of the chair, it's not really that important. The most important part is making sure you're getting a straight line where you want it cut. Here I was off a little bit, so I might need to clean that up, but we'll check it at the end to make sure the chair is level. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips and more. I can now roll the chair so I can cut the next leg. Now, one of the most common mistakes of people using hand saws is they don't secure their work. So if you don't have a bench like I do with a clamp, what you can do is secure the piece against a wall. So on the floor against the wall here, put some padding around it and push it against the wall and that'll provide some stability. The reason stability is so important is if this piece is moving just the slightest bit, the saw is going to bind. And that's what people get frustrated with when they're trying to use a handsaw is because it keeps binding. But if you secure the piece, then you're going to be able to control that cut and you're going to have a very good experience using a handsaw. So let me get out the Dazuki saw 
and I'll cut this one off here and show you what the difference is. I'm going to use the same process here, use my thumb to guide the saw, and it's important that when you use your knuckle that it's touching above the teeth of the blade. You don't want to skin your knuckle, so you want to make sure you're keeping it up a little bit. And I'm going to start at the end here because I've got a pull stroke, and I'm just going to push and start my line. So what I'm doing is the exact same process. I'm going to go across here, get a straight line, and then we work my way down the reference line at the front here. So now I'm going to start coming down the front here. And what I want to do is make sure I'm going to that line. I'm actually a little bit off. So I just need to adjust it right at the start here. And with Japanese saws, they're meant that you can actually pull with two hands. That's why the handle's so long. So as I get through here, I'll switch over and use two hands once I've got the saw blade set where I want it. No, there's actually too much flex in the chair to do that. So that took me about a quarter of the time it did with the other saw. Take a look at the cut here. You can see there's a line across here. This is where I readjusted the cut to make sure I was on that line. There's a little bit of a hump here, but it's barely noticeable. You see the texture is a lot less here than what we had on the previous cut. So I'm going to use the Dazuki saw to cut the other two. It's easier to control, gives me a better quality cut, and I'll get the chair done and we'll check if it's level. Now we can check for level by trying to rock the chair. And you see, there is a little bit of a rock. So this leg is lifting up here, and so was that one, which means these two are too long. Now this was the first one that I cut with the dovetail saw, and it's not quite cut to the mark. So I'm gonna turn this over, cut to that mark, and then check it, and it should be perfect. So I'll flip this back over again. So here you can see when I cut this with a dovetail saw, I was a little bit off here and a little bit off here. Now to cut that off with a dovetail saw is really, really tough, but with the Dazuki, I can pull it off. If I put the saw back here, you can see where I had started to cut the finish off, but the saw moved to the right. So what I'm going to do is use the Dazuki saw right on that line and then cut down the face. I stopped here just so you could see how little I'm taking off the bottom of the chair here. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I'm using such a thin blade on this saw. I'll pull up the dovetail saw here and you can see the difference. It's a much thicker blade, so it's much more difficult to make such a fine cut. This is essentially about two widths of the blade to get just that fine bit off that I need. Now when cutting off such a small slice here, you can see it's a rougher pattern than if I was cutting straight through, but this should do the job. Let's give it a test. And there we go, no wobble in the chair. 
So that's good. The last thing to do is to chamfer the edges. So if we look at the legs that I cut off, you can see that the bottoms here are chamfered. And this is the edge that I cut, it's very square. If you leave a chair leg like this, it's apt to split when you're moving the chair around. So if you put a chamfer on, it prevents that from happening. There are a couple ways you can put a chamfer on. One would be with a sander. You probably want to go with a 120 grit to get it down and maybe a 220 to finish it off. Another way to do it is with a block plane. And if you're familiar with planes, that's a faster way to do things, but the sander will work as well. Using a block plane can take some practice, but it's a fast way to get things done. I sand this off with 220 grit sandpaper, and then we're good to go. The finishing touch is putting on some stain. The easiest way to do that is with a stain marker. These are touch-up markers that you can use. I've got a separate video on that that shows you different types that you can buy and how well they work. I hope this gives you the confidence and the knowledge to be able to shorten a chair or a stool for yourself. To make it as easy as possible, it is best to use quality tools. This is a saw by Gokujo. I'll leave a link in the video description below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, you can click over here and click on that bell icon to get notified every time I publish a video. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop. <music>